It doesn't take long to be from 17 to being 57. 40 years just goes like that. Tell us about the Beatles story. Well, I was um, I was working for VH1, my first uh, broadcasting job as a VJ, and I, Paul McCartney picked me to fly to London to do a live town hall with him. And I was a Beatle fanatic, like like I knew every solo album, every single. I knew the you know every beast. I I own enough Ringo albums to end a marriage. And uh, I was getting ready to go to London, and they called me and said, "We need you to go to London a day late." I'm like, "Oh man, why?" This was a long time ago. I was very young. They said, we need you in New York to interview George Harrison. Wow. And he hadn't toured in 20 years. Uh, you know, he never gave interviews, very rarely. He had produced this album with Ravi Shankar of Indian musicians called Chance of India. And, you know, George started off Catholic and then got deeper into spirituality. And he meant a lot to me. He came in for a 10-minute soundbite. And I am telling you, like, this woman's a good interviewer. She knows what she's doing. Thank you. I was the worst interviewer in the world. I met my idol, and I was a blibbering idiot. Like, ah. I couldn't shut up. I was making bad jokes about Rick Astley and the Spice Girls. Uh, but he liked how raw I was. Okay. And I knew if I asked about the Beatles, he would get up and leave. Uh -oh. okay. But I knew if I asked about God, or Hare Krishna, or meditation, or what happens when you die, he would stay. So he stayed for four hours. Wow, that's impressive. And then I, uh, one of our crew members' girlfriends came to visit, and she was in a band and had her acoustic guitar. And I put the guitar in George's hands, and he hadn't done a concert in America since the 70s, and he played four songs live, what with me sitting next to him, four songs he'd never done live before, including an unreleased one. And uh, he left, and two months later, he was diagnosed with cancer. Oh, wow. It wound up being his last public performance. An and interview, probably. Uh, he did a radio, it was his last TV, TV interview, yeah. And um, VH1 aired it, and like nobody watched. It was a half hour special, and they took all the God stuff out. But when he died, they aired the whole thing around the clock. And so the day he, and, and I was such a bad interviewer, it got me into therapy. I moved out to LA, and I went to therapy. I was like, I met my idol, and I was an idiot, and I can't forgive myself, I'm Catholic. And then years later, when he died, uh, they aired it around the clock with all the stuff, and people saw George Harrison and some 26-year-old kid talking about... God and what happens when you die helped me forgive myself, made me a better broadcaster and interviewer. And to this day, like I'll have straight guys walk up to me and hug me in airports because they say, oh, that was the first really spiritual thing I ever saw on TV. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I got to meet his widow and she, she thanked me for it. And uh, I'm in the Martin Scorsese movie for about five seconds. So thank you, George. That, that <laughs> happened. Ooh, I'm facing another day and a darkness only. Follow me on Instagram at I am Donna Briggs underscore or Twitter Donna Briggs 10. And remember, make every day a great day.